and today we have a brand new concept for the anti <laughs> travel show let's say different we, yes we're going to try something very very new today and we're going to take you on board the blue bridge ferry so we're going to show you everything there is to see about the blue bridge ferry including we'll take you on the bridge where the captain operates so yeah it's a whole hour of us kind of uh, showing you uh, that awesome experience all the way we're taking you from wellington to picton so right now we're currently driving making our way toward the blue bridge check-in and as we are making our way toward the blue bridge check-in we can see uh, the ferry a little bit in the background so we're driving through beautiful wellington uh, and we want to say hello to sherry which is here saying good morning guys how are you doing good sherry morning. that's awesome and Adil is here as well. We'll go over your question in a minute uh, as we're just going to show you the first part of the check-in. And then obviously there's going to be a long wait until we board. And so during that wait, we'll be able to chat a little further and go over the comments. So what is the first thing that we're doing when we arrive uh, okay. at the check-in station? Yeah, so we uh, it's pretty easy to tell where we need to sort of park up and go to the check-in booth. And as we arrive, a really cool thing is that they take your your number plate that you've used to book onto the ferry they know who you are straight away so there's so look no... at me with my reservation the lady yeah. doesn't even need it we've got our reservation prepared and she's <laughs> like no no i know who you are um so yeah they just sort of have all that information already available and the check-in process is pretty easy they give you some uh tickets from the ch from the check-in booth so um yeah. you know don't lose them um. And they tell you where and how to park as well. Like that's that's quite important. We do like to know where and how to park. Yeah. So um, yeah, she says I'll oh, go to what like drive towards my colleague over there, and she will tell you exactly which lane you need to park in. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, Actually, I but, have to turn. I'm not going straight. Okay. <laughs> oh. So yeah. So yeah, Good pun. we are we are aiming towards the colleague that she was pointing out yeah. to us. So um, yeah. yeah, so a lot of people are kind of stressed about uh, getting on board and and, and and all that. And genuinely, it's not it's not a, a, a hard process or anything like that. Um, uh, and so yeah, Sherry is asking if I don't know my number plate yet, can I give it to them at the check-in counter? Yeah, so they will actually see it when you come in. But yeah, otherwise they will take your name or anything. It's just it just happened to be that convenient on, on that very day. It's absolutely okay. So a lot of people, uh, as you can see, just right in front of us, there is a camper van from you know probably somebody foreign kind of traveling in the country. They don't necessarily have to know their number plate. It's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's really a lot of people kind of waiting. So a lot, I was about to say, a lot of people are stressed uh, about, uh, you know, like the parking and, and, and all these kind of things. But genuinely, it is really wide lane. It is really easy. There's no, there's, there's no panic right here. And you're guided all the way through. So you see this lady just scans my ticket and straight away starts giving us um, like, you know, very easy to follow instructions. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a hard process at all. And, uh, and, you know, they're really happy to kind of like walk you through everything and go slow. They do know that a lot of people are going to be using a camper van and they don't usually often drive a camper van. It's absolutely okay. Hey, Fabio, welcome on board. That's uh, nice to have you on the board of our ferry today. That's, you know, that's just, that's just the team of the week. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is me in my little car, you know, kind of doing my little loop. And you, you'll see me... Um, You'll see me even kind of have to do a two-point turn right here. Despite the fight, it's really wide. I, I've just acted like a, like a bit of an idiot. Um, actually, Laura was kind enough to... Oh, no, no. She's showing you guys that I'm doing a two-point turn. I was like, Laura is kind enough to hide that, but no. I far enough away in the background. Yeah. Sherry said that she's a little bit stressed already. She's an overthinker. Don't stress about it. Yeah. It is it is very simple. So and they so have boom. like a they have like a lane for like smaller camper vans, yeah. and then they have a lane for larger motorhomes. Which obviously they make the lane for larger motorhomes easier to access. Uh, you know that's sort of like the easiest place to park, really. But yeah. yeah, as you can see here, we're pointing towards like there's a lane where there are medium sized camper vans. So. Uh, it's all very well spaced out and you don't have to do any crazy maneuverabilities <laughs> at this point. All right. So while we're waiting, so obviously there is a significant wait every time, you know, you, you, you know, it's kind of like every 
stop you can you know every section you cannot have to wait uh, we're going to answer Adil's question about uh, you know accessibility so Adil is asking uh, I would like to know if the Blue Bridge ferry is wheelchair accessible and if there are any accessible cabins aboard the ship so uh, when you are uh, about to take the Blue Bridge ferry with a uh, wheelchair you can actually just tell them in advance and they will also park you in an area on the ferry which has more space than what you will see us having therefore you'll be able to get off your car and get back in your car with a bit more freedom and then within the ferry there are lifts uh, everywhere so you'll be able to get to most like pretty much everywhere um quite easily uh, within the ferry so they have really large uh, elevator and we will show them to you we thought about you ideal so we will show them to you in uh, there. Yeah. They also, so, like, yeah. upon check-in as well, you just need to just remind them as well. Yeah. Like, oh, um, I'd like to have, like, easy access to the lift. So that way yeah. they will park you as close to the elevator as possible as well when they're parking you, like, yeah. when you're getting on board. All right. So uh, after a long wait, obviously we did cut, right? The wait was a little longer than that, but it's, it's normal, right? After a long wait, so then every lane is uh, is basically directed, um, you know, by the staff. As you can see, there's people in high visibility. Um, Vests? Vests, yes. Vests pretty much everywhere pointing you in the right direction. And then the boarding process, the vehicle boarding process is starting. Now, if you are taking the ferry by foot, as you can see on screen right now, there are some people by foot which are going to be uh, waiting on which what's the sides on that the side right, right here on the, the right on the left hand side right yeah. here you will see people just right here Walking through a tunnel. yeah <laughs> you see where that orange person is this is where all the people the people which are foot passengers are currently waiting and they are going to get make their way in as well so yeah. here you go this, it, this yeah. is just to show you like what the non-vehicle passenger is now yeah. now we can keep talking i just it was one section we needed yeah. to show yeah cool uh, yeah, it also if you're a foot passenger, there is like an inside waiting room with uh, toilet facilities, yeah. seats and stuff. Uh, I think there were vending machines there as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So yeah, and like the information check-in and things like that. So you have like a comfortable place to wait as well if you're just a foot passenger. All right, so we are making our way onto the uh, ferry itself right now. So as you can see, uh, you know, we do have a small car, but in front of us there is a, a larger kind of SUV type of vehicle. And, and, you know, there is space to maneuver your way around. It's not uh, too too really cram and too hard to to make your way onto the ferry uh, a lot of people are very stressed about that uh, I'm, i know sherry is already like panicking for sure <laughs> about <laughs> to take that uh, that ferry but it is relatively easy to uh to kind of board and uh, yeah so what we decided to do on this one is i will show you literally the whole way up so you'll be able to see exactly what will happen to you so you know if you're stressed or not about it uh, especially if you do have an automatic vehicle um it's going to be very easy because you don't have to try to do like those the hill start. Yeah, the, those those going uphill start, which are a bit a bit tough. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you need a little bit extra space because you want to clear a little bit of a bump or something, just let the vehicle in front kind of go a little bit ahead of you, like I just did right here. There is absolutely no stress in kind of you know taking it slow and steady. Um, you know, it's a whole boarding process, right? So they're boarding about 150. Um, at most, they will board 150 cars, so it's not it's not like, like too many. It's yeah. okay. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's my Sherry face right here. Yeah. Uh, Sherry's asking, are there public toilets around the area before you board? So yes, so where you are waiting uh, with your vehicle, in front and at the back, there are public toilets. You can get out of your vehicle and go to the public toilet for sure. And if you are a food passenger, uh, literally in a building where there is check-in and desks and as was Laura saying, like chairs and everything else, uh, there are stations to charge your phone with USB plugs and everything like that. And there are also some very big toilets. And yes, ideal, all the toilets are, or not all the toilets, but the toilets in the waiting area are uh, wheelchair accessible. Um, we did go check it ourselves yeah. to make sure it was. So yeah, here you go. So I made it to deck probably three, I think, or maybe two. I don't know which deck I am on right now, but uh, yeah, we made it all the way, all the way up there. And as you can see, every yeah, like about like let's say five meters, there is a staff. You know, kind of uh, make sure that we go in the right place. So you're always like well. Uh, orientated well guided, yeah well and, yeah. guided throughout the whole process so you're never going to be like panicking of like where was i supposed to go um and how were that supposed to go there so yeah it's very 
it's a very simple process. I hope that this reassures everybody watching right here mm -hmm. that it is not hard to make your way there. And if at any point you have any questions, all those um, people on in high vest right now are actually all super happy to kind of help and uh, point you in the right direction. And even when you see when I park, they, they are actually going to actually tell us how to park. Um, but yeah, uh, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that, well, people are going to get off their cars, you know, without looking too much. So just kind of be aware of that. There's going to be people everywhere as, as you get closer to where you're supposed to park. Everybody's off boarding um, and getting their way, um, you know, their way, making their way so we onto um, the ferry itself. So, yeah. I'm I'm focused right now, so you know, guys, I can't, I can't talk too much. I'm really focused on <laughs> on the on the driving. Um, yeah, as you can see right here on the side as well, motorcycles are also a load on the ferries. Uh, there are special spots for them, so easy, breezy. What is Sherry saying? Sherry says, "Thank you for this video, by the way. It really helps. I get worried sometimes when I don't know exactly where I'm going in new places." <laughs> <laughs> well, here you go. There is kind of no way you're not going to know everything there yeah. is to know in this video, right? So we. We are we are only a few minutes in, and uh, there is phew, there is forty three more minutes of videos uh, coming. <laughs> You'll to know you, right? every step of the process. <laughs> yes, there is kind of no way you're not going to see. So yeah, so as I was pointing out, you you have always a staff that's going to help you kind of find your final resting spot for that vehicle, and it's gonna boom. Tells you how to park. You're done. This is why you're staying for the rest of your time. Easy. Yeah, and uh, they keep they keep on helping other people. But they, what what that's happening basically, um, basically you are starting gathering all your belongings. So make sure that you grab everything that you need because you can't get back to your car, can you, Laura? No, you can't. So once everybody's onboarded, um, you you know you go you'll see us going upstairs, and then once everybody is you know where they need to be. They will cordon off the stairs and the elevators back down to the deck with the cars. So you can't access your car once once the journey gets underway. So so if you need your phone charger, your yeah. water, your... It is handy to have like just a little day pack or something yeah. to take An extra layer is very important as well. Yeah, extra layer. Any bits of entertainment you might need or any snacks or, you know, just anything like that. So just make sure you have everything. Yeah. Um, and by the way, you can see that the, the, the ferry gets uh, full relatively quickly. Yeah. So there was no edit right here. And you see we're already surrounded with cars. They do a very cars, efficient so, yeah. job. Yeah. So Laura has packed everything that we needed. So now Laura is going to become the star of the show. And uh, so, yeah, what's happening to you, Laura? Yeah. So, you know, we got we got our bags, what we need. And we're going to uh, go make our merry way up onto the higher decks where all the foot passengers go once they've parked the cars. Um, Sherry is saying that she's glad there's no reverse parking involved. <laughs> me too, me too. So yeah, let's uh, let's head towards. Uh, well, you basically can see where everyone's walking towards. So yeah. al although there's not any massive sign saying like this way, this way, it's just like it's really obvious where you need to walk well, to. The easy, the easy way they do is that they point the right direction to the first couple of people, and then uh, and then bam, you know, everybody follows. So, yeah. yeah. And as you can see, Windy Wellington is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we're in Wellington. <laughs> So um, yeah, yeah. So it put, so we basically just like sort of follow the crew, follow the crowd towards. There's a set of stairs, but like we say, there's also an elevator. And we will the show them there. to you. So we'll get quickly sidetracked. That we you guys probably won't be, but bye bye Wellington. Yeah. Uh, you guys probably won't be, but we'll follow the steps for now, and then we'll just do a quick sidetrack to um to show you guys the elevator and, and where it is. Uh, Laura, were you cold? No, it was just the wind, wasn't it? Oh, it's just the wind. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had. Uh, I, I, I mean, it was winter in yeah. Wellington, but still, like, I don't had think it was that I had a jacket on, so it was, it was fine. Yeah. But yeah, having a windproof jacket and a jumper would be quite handy, as we're going to show yeah. you all the outdoors area where you have some fantastic views, and uh, you won't regret packing extra layers right here, and even yeah. the extra snacks and stuff. Yeah, anyway. you'll actually, yeah, you will actually want to spend some time outside while you're on the ferry, which, we, yeah, we'll get to, but it is definitely worth, like, being prepared to be outside where it is going to be very windy because, you know, you're on a moving ferry, so it will be windy. Um, it always has been every single time we've taken any of the ferries. So. Every single time. Yeah. So, yeah, here's <laughs> the elevator, guys. So Yeah, so we want to show you ideal, uh, the elevator. So here you go. Um, so, obviously, 
you can keep going with the stairs and you go to the to the other area but we'll just take the elevator quickly to show you um like the area where the cabins are we will get back to the cabins later but we wanted to show you that there is a, a large elevator yeah. available in and place. adil was asking if the if the cabins were wheelchair accessible so yeah the elevator actually goes all the way to the cabins because the cabins yeah. are on a higher deck so it gives you access to all the areas basically so you have full access um yeah so easy as and so you can see one of the rare shots you're going to see today which include laura and i thanks to the mirrors of the uh <laughs> of the ferry anyway so we took the elevator to show you what it looks like uh, so if somebody was waiting for the elevator in the meantime and we're arriving in the big reception area So right here, there is a big reception desk where you can go collect the key or book a cabin if you didn't book one, but we'll see that a bit later. And on the side, there is also a, a quiet area. Now on the uh, left side of uh, Laura, we are going to see a cinema, but we'll uh, see that a little we'll bit later. We'll come back to some of those things, yeah. yeah. And we're just kind of making our, our way through like the main areas that you're going to see of the ferry. Right here, those stairs would go up to the cabins, for instance. And this is the cafe. So there is both a cafe and a ca cafeteria slash restaurant. This is the cafe. Uh, the collection area is closed right now, but the cafe is open right here where you'll be able to order all your coffees. We, we had a coffee there, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we, we, did, may, yeah. we may film it. And this is kind of like the restaurant slash cafeteria area. There is a lot on offer here from like all the drinks and everything like that. As you can see, everything is on the same level, so it is accessible. Uh, but yeah. So there is a lot of food on offer and there's really a lot of kind of uh, uh, yeah places to eat and you have fantastic views as well. But we'll show you more of the views obviously a little bit later. And the food there was actually kind of restaurant styles, right? They don't just reheat them. They have a full kitchen there, which is yeah. absolutely epic. I mean, that's a kitchen with a view here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so they yeah. had like various different food options. So you could go like cafeteria style, have some of the like pre-made stuff that they had. You could Hi, get Rafa sort Kat. of, you can get like... Um, you can get cabinet food as well. So if you just want to pick up something quick, that's available. But yeah, like Robin says, there's also like made to order food. So if you wanted to order, for instance, they had burgers, nachos or tacos, that sort of thing. So you can get something like a bit more. Oh, yeah. They also have like a sort of charging station area as well, which was pretty cool with USB ports. This is the kids playground area where you, you, you need to stay with your kids. There's no nanny there, but you know, at <laughs> yeah. least you can entertain the if kids. You need to entertain yeah. and Laura small is children. Out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So there is plenty of games right here and they will actually put a kids movie there or cartoons. And Laura was pointing throughout the whole ferry. There are bags if you get if you are sick. <laughs> yeah, the sick um, bags. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, you don't really feel like it's moving too much. Yeah. So as you can see on the side, we have accessible toilets. And now we're showing you the movie cinema. theater. So cinema. yeah, the, the little cinema, onboard cinema. So they were showing the Avengers. So it's obviously not the newest movie or anything, but you know, it's kind of a good way to kill a few hours when you are on the ferry uh, the seats are obviously a little dated but still like comfortable and quite nice yeah I mean, you know, they were like airplane it, style yeah <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of really fun uh, to to watch um to watch a movie there we actually did watch probably a quarter of the movie not even yeah we uh, saw, saw just, the end yeah, yeah just because we were showing you like all the different places but yeah so that's what the cinema kind of looks like in there and yeah, the toilets and the accessible toilets are right here. Changing facilities All right. as well. So we're making our way back toward the front. So uh, again, this is the straight Feronia ferry. Uh, you know, they have two different ferries. There's a Connemara and the straight Feronia. But yeah, so at the front desk, as promised, we can pick up our keys to make our way toward uh, the cabin. And just Laura was passing the quiet area where if you don't want to be bothered by anyone, if you want everybody to be quiet, you can get there. <laughs> Uh, so this time we're going to be taking the back stairs to get all the way to the cabins because why not? We we yeah, kind of we want take to show every you different, different route. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to show you like kind of different uh, places, uh, different ways to go. Don't I can't remember where we're going right here, but yeah. We're heading towards um, the cabin that we have been allocated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we got a key with a number on it. So, uh, and then when you get up to various different corridors and stuff, there are signs saying, like, cabins, you know, 1 to 15 this way yeah. type thing. So, yeah, we're following... Uh, following the instructions seen on the various boards and signs to put you in the right direction. And, uh, yeah... Uh, another thing to mention is that sometimes they kind of personalize the, yeah. the, the, the cabin, which is kind of fun and cute. 
Uh, but um, yeah, what I wanted to say was that it's a great option to actually take a cabin if you are doing a lot of driving and everything, honestly. So we admittedly on that trip, we were going from Wellington to Picton. We didn't really use the cabin. We'll show it to you a little bit, but that's pretty much it. Um, but on the way back, uh, going from the south and back to the north, and we actually did snooze very nicely. So yeah, Laura, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> There's me trying to find... Uh... <laughs> Try to find where our cabin is. Um, on another note about the door, some of the doors though are a bit heavy. So if you are like in a wheelchair, it's kind of easier to have someone with you. Yeah. Like obviously travel with someone that can open the doors for you because they are actually like on as they are on like all ships and as stuff. They're really, lost. <laughs> they're really heavy. Yes, yeah, so I'll just distract you all from the fact that I am <laughs> can't follow signs and can't find my way, despite it being very clear. It's just like yeah. You wish I was editing this section, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> anyway, so we made it to uh, the cabin. So let's show you what a cabin actually looks like. Um, okay, so that's kind of what the cabin looks like. So there are some with views, some without views. But let's be honest, the view is a small, uh, small kind of ship style window. So they're not really that big. And uh, yeah, each cabin comes with toilet and shower facilities, which is kind of handy right here. Uh, if you are, you know, if you need to freshen you need up, to freshen up yeah. yeah, it's always kind of nice. So each of the cabins come, or at least the cabins that we've seen, uh, they all came with four different beds. So there's two beds right here and then you can unfold two of them. I probably will show you that at some point. Uh, there is a lot of uh, charging facilities, USBs, normal, uh, you know, like normal plugs, all of that. So you yeah. should be able to kind of plug very nicely and they all use the same plugs that in New Zealand. So if you have an adapter, you should be good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm just taking the bed down, making sure that it's, uh, you know, uh, not breaking anything. And so here you go. Here's another bed if you wanted to. And you can put your little, <laughs> little ladder. ladder on there. So yeah, here you go. I just uh, show it for the sake of example. Look at me. Robin's got to go, uh, took himself in. <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, so yeah. Uh, good night, Robin. But yeah, that's what the cabins are like. And genuinely, like, you know, if you turn off the lights and everything like that, you can have a very, very nice yeah. time. So, Laura and I need to find ourselves a nice viewing area. Viewing deck. So there is a lot of them. There is. So, there's a lot to explore around. There's various different viewing decks. You can go at one of the lower viewing decks, just sort of along the sides of the ferry. And then, as you make your way up the stairs, you'll find various other viewpoints as well. So Look at Laura taking the view. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's also the good thing about the ferry as well. Is like, you... It doesn't feel... It doesn't ever feel too crowded. I mean, the most amount of people that we seen is just everybody sort of getting onto like boarding the ferry at the same time is obviously when you have the most amount of people but when it comes to actually everybody's on board there's lots of different spaces and places to sort of sit down relax everybody sort of has their you know you can find your own sort of little little cozy place to either relax there's nothing or... cozy about the windy viewing decks no, of wellington let's I, be honest so cozy places indoor <laughs> look at those hair outdoors not <laughs> Not so cozy, but, you know, different places where you could just, like, take in the views and things. Um, obviously, at the start, <laughs> the views are of the Wellington Harbour. And um, and uh, with that, the elements of Wellington as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, obviously, you're on top of a, of, a, of a big ferry, of a large boat. So, obviously, it's going to be windy. So, that's why we were telling you when we were at the car, make sure to pack all the stuff that you will need. Um, you will absolutely need to, uh, to to carry with you I extra layers. But yeah, so the viewing areas are very large. There is plenty of viewing areas. And uh, yeah, if you're lucky, you'll be able to spot your own vehicle down there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, I can yeah. see my car. No, the I can't. The upper, inside. upper viewing areas are definitely like the better, the better viewing areas, I find. Like they have like seating areas. They have like little benches and stuff. So, and we definitely saw, we, we walked around the ferry like several times throughout the whole shit the whole sailing and there's some people that literally spend the whole sailing there was on one top. kiwi guy <laughs> in in very short shorts that was outside for the whole time so we slowly live in wellington so it's a great time to for us to give you a bit of information about the straight feronia which is the ferry that we are currently taking so blue bridge operates the straight feronia and the Connemara. So the Strait Feronia is uh, is the, the older kind of ferry, but uh, older yet very well experienced. Uh, <laughs> it can take about 150 cars and 400 passengers. 
and yeah it has a lot of uh, it has a lot of facilities there but um yeah you can uh, you have cafes you have restaurants you have a, a lounge um there is also the quiet lounge the movie lounge uh, family room um and plenty of viewing decks for sure um there are accessible toilets pretty much everywhere there is a uh, baby changing areas workstation and you can also get your own private cabin and mm. uh, the boat itself is 186 meters long with a beam overall of 25.6 meters and a gross tonnage of 21,856 tons um so yeah it usually travels around 60 knots and uh yeah that's basically that's already enough facts right here <laughs> uh while i was talking you guys could uh, see laura traveling a little bit around the viewing deck taking a lot of photos i mean obviously we uh, took the time to take a lot of different photos because that's kind of what we do so yeah the first start of like the of the sailing is it's quite scenic because like a lot of people talk about like oh yeah going through the Marlborough Sounds is like the best part of the ferry sailing however it starts off pretty epic you get to see like the obviously the sort of urban landscape of Wellington but then as you sort of leave and go towards the end of the Wellington Harbour there's a lot of different sort of mountainous areas that you can see um, there's wind farms that are visible there's also um there's also lighthouses, which we'll probably you'll probably show we'll probably show you guys a little bit later. But yeah, there's there is actually quite a lot to see, even just from the get go, even departing from Wellington. So yeah, lots of photo opportunities, and you can definitely see why there's several people that decide to stay up here on the viewing deck for the entire sailing. And I have I must admit, when I first took the ferry in New Zealand, I I was up here for the whole time. I was just like this this is this is epic. I just want to watch. The whole amazing scenery go by yeah so the wellington harbour is really is really cool like you know despite the fact that yeah you are living in a really really big city there's still like you know rugged cliffs mountains there is uh lighthouses to check out uh you know there's really a lot of uh, of things to see how uh, we saw our friends with a with a really really short <laughs> short right here but uh, yeah yeah um in summer, I definitely recommend yeah. uh, having sunscreen and stuff like that for when you're, you know, staying on the viewing deck. Because although it'll feel like it's, uh, you know, it'll feel quite cool with the wind, you'll still probably get burned quite a lot. So yeah, hats, sun sunscreen and all that in the summer months is definitely recommended. Jacket, pretty much for any occasion. <laughs> it's, it's quite yeah. windy. It depends, depends how you are in the wind. But yeah, jacket's always good. Every, look, everybody's wearing a jacket. Oh, yeah. So. It's really windy. This is a different viewing area that's right in front. And obviously, it gets really windy. <laughs> I feel like Laura's hair got a, got a treat on that day. You get, you, you get the blow dry of the century oh, yeah. right here, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so you, you can access quite a lot of different areas. So the area we're filming right here, the, this is an area which is restricted, just the one in front of us. But where we are right now, it is a public area where you can go. Uh, but obviously you can see that it's restricted with just so much material, machinery is there. We don't want people to All go the play around with it. Stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's pretty cool that you can get so many different viewing areas. As you can see, there's safety lifeboats and all, all the usual safety precautions that you would expect in a ship. Um, but yeah, that's also why they don't let you back down to the cars and stuff for safety reasons while you are traveling. And we have definitely been in other countries where they allow you to stay in the car for the whole ferry sailing. And I have wondered to myself, is this actually safe? It really doesn't feel and safe. And then, so. then we are to escape from the window um, <laughs> because Laura was starting to panic and it was getting yeah, really, really hot. Yeah, so I do really appreciate the, um, the safety protocols of the Blue Bridge Ferry, allow not allowing you to stay in your car because that is really a quite a dodgy thing to do anyway speaking of sailing. safety life rifts are everywhere life jackets are everywhere there's plenty of really big sign with that so if you kind of stay if you're conscious and you'll be stressed about uh, about any of that you 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 have nothing to stress yeah. about i guess i mean obviously nothing is ever 100 percent safe but i mean you know all the safety procedures are, are you know followed very well and there is yeah there is no panic with that so. yeah safety was i actually don't think there's ever been any major accidents in new zealand ferries anyway the regulation mm. using are pretty tough but yeah all right if you're wondering uh, why the flag of new zealand looks slightly different this is a maritime flag flag of new zealand many countries have slightly different maritime flags that they have normal flags so yeah <laughs> 
All right, so as we were making our way outside of the uh, Wellington Arbor, the, uh, the the captain addressed everybody on addressed board. Addressed the nation. And said, hey, there are some dolphins, massive pod of dolphins. And so all those little splashy splash in the water happened to be awesome dolphins coming and playing on the bow of the ferry. Um, so yeah, one of the great things is that, well, the crew is watching out for the wildlife and making sure that we don't miss a bit. So yeah, look at uh, how many dolphins yeah, there are around. hundreds. Yeah, there was really, really a ton of dolphins. They were like literally rushing to come to the ferry to give us a good show. <laughs> I mean, they probably were just coming to have a good play they for were, themselves, yeah, but they were down they were giving a, us a really good show. Good so time. yeah, that's absolutely awesome that the captain was able to uh, to spot them and tell everybody to come and have a look. And uh, yeah, they were absolutely having a blast. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, that was so cool to see some dolphins. I yeah. always like to see some more life, don't you, Laura? Yeah, these ones are dusky dolphins, which are the, the type of dolphins that you usually swim with if you go to Kaikoura. And they were the ones that are usually quite, you know, playful and acrobatic. But other types of dolphins that you might see often um, on the ferry are bottlenose dolphins, which are quite yeah. large. They're much, much bigger, larger much than those, those ones. So, yeah, seeing dolphins... They eat a dusky dolphin for breakfast. <laughs> Well, I hope not. Um, but yeah, seeing um, yeah, seeing dolphins is quite common on the ferries. Yeah, yeah. it won't be unusual for yeah. sure. All right, guys, speaking of uh, getting inside, we are going to show you a restricted area, something that not that many people get to see. And, uh, it's yeah. an exclusive for you guys. <laughs> so we are going to show you the bridge where the captain operates. So we're making our way toward the crew area. So just a, a fun uh, a fun fact about the ferry. Actually, the crew actually lives on board. They don't get dropped off at the end of every workday. They live on board for two weeks and then they get uh, uh, some time off and then they get back on board and then they basically stay on board for the whole time because it's just simpler in that way. So we pass through like where the crew kind of lives. And here is the bridge. This is uh, this is the captain that's going to quickly escape. Um, <laughs> he sees then, the camera and runs. Yeah, he sees the camera and runs. He says hi, and then we're going to talk to his second uh, shipmate uh, that's going to show us a little bit about how the, uh, the 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 boat is operated. But it's it's quite incredible how computerized it is. It's a little bit like a like a plane cockpit. You know, they really often say that the. Um, they know planes are, are like mostly computers, but yeah, it's the same thing for the ferry. Like they have like ton of screens and machineries and yeah. buttons and that's you know it, it looks very far away from your 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 pirate ship at the Captain Jack Sparrow, isn't it? <laughs> There's no helm. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, no helm at the helm. <laughs> yeah, where do you stand when you want to stay at the helm? So yeah, so Laura is going to be taking a few photos because that's what she does and she loves taking photos. And I'll kind of make my way a little bit around and uh, show you a little bit of the whole console and all the whole thing works i obviously cannot tell you how the whole thing works because you know that's a lot of different buttons but it's kind of cool to see how you know see a little bit of a behind the scene look captain laura right here um too bad uh, too, too too bad for all of us um but yeah so yeah that's what the bridge of uh, the blue bridge ferry looks like um you know obviously there is a lot of screen obviously they have to have a really big view of, of everything so you know it's not the best filming in the world as we you know we were talking to people and everything but you get to see all the different buttons if you're curious about buttons <laughs> yeah this is the second in command um that is showing us a little bit uh, the map and, and how everything works um, it's obviously very hard to film these kind of things, but yeah, it's showing us how they map the route and how they have to deviate at times when there's another ship, um, you know, around. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a cool thing to see. We just we just thought if you know if we do an episode like that, we need to show you something a little bit more exclusive than what you can see yourself. Uh, you know, the value here is to yeah. show you everything you want to know about it. Yes, for sure. But it's also to kind of give you a bit of an exclusive um, taste and uh, show you what what you get to see. Mm. Yeah. Always providing extra yeah. value at NZ Pocket Guys. Exactly. By the way, if you do like this sort of episode, do let us know if, if that works for you guys. I know there's very little views, so you know that probably means that it's not something we should do again. But if you feel like it's a cool thing, you know, even if you're watching a replay of that, just put it in the comments so we kind of know if it's something that we need to kind of do again or not um it, it looks like it's probably not something we'll do very often seeing that we have like you know six viewers but yeah 
So we skipped ahead right here, right? We were mostly in Wellington, then we were in between of the straits, in between the straits, um, to show you the bridge. Um, and now we are kind of like, you know, it's almost the end, right? So we are arriving in the Marlborough Sound. It's the finale. Yeah, so Laura, Marlborough Sound, do you like it? Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. So as you're approaching, uh, you do come into this sort of sound landscape. It's it's a, basically a smaller version of a fjord. So if you've been, to, you know, if you go to Milford Sound, you have grand mountains towering above you. This is more of a, you know, just a slightly smaller version where you've got more like, you know, some hills coming out of the out of the water there. But uh, yeah, it as you approach it, you do have these sort of cliffs right on right beside the ferry so the ferry's navigating through the sound and this particular sound is the queen charlotte sound that you are going through um and it's damn beautiful and it's damn beautiful um so the journey uh, the total journey of the ferry takes about three and a half hours right that's that's kind of like roughly what it is you know i include boarding off boarding and everything make it four four and a half hours if you you know if you want to kind of play it safe and this is probably about the last like four it's a 30 to 45 minute that's that's what you're seeing right here kiwi loren has a good question and says i've never taken the blue bridge ferry only the entire land a few times what would you say the main difference are if any um okay so First of all, I would say that there's a big emphasis on the cabins in Blue Bridge. They yeah. are like they have a lot of cabins. So if you were looking for a bit of extra comfort on your ferry journey, then they are a really good option to go yeah. for. I do really like the movie uh, theater, which is only on the straight Feronia. So the Colombia doesn't really have that. They, they they play a kids movie in the kids lounge, and that's it. Mm. Um, but yeah, so so I do like the the movie theater. I do like the the space of the restaurant. Like I do really. Like like that um, as opposed to the Interlander which feels a little bit different that said Interlander gets new ferry like coming in the next few years so that's probably going to be changing as well um, but yeah but I feel like the, the extra kind of like facilities and comfort is definitely what you you're getting with Blue Bridge um, when it comes down to like nickel and dimes as well Blue Bridge is slightly cheaper uh, than it is with, uh, Inter with Interlander. Interlander however if you want to purchase a cabin well you have to you know pay a little bit extra but uh, I mean, in my opinion, when you're tired and when you're doing a lot of driving, it's definitely worth it yeah. for sure. Um, so, you know. Yeah. So what uh, sort of what Blue Bridge, you know, like that focuses, it has like, uh, say, a smaller public indoor area than Inter Island do, does. So sort of Blue Bridge sort of makes up for that with like a lot more cabin areas than Inter Islander. But Inter Islanders will have several different cafes to go to, go to and stuff. So... Um, yeah, so Blue Bridge only has that sort of like one main public area that you can walk, that we showed you towards the beginning of the video. So, if so you do it has want to one rewind. cafe and one restaurant. Yeah, and, and, and then, then a lot they of would kind of merge. Yeah, they will merge into the same area. Yeah, so um, that would be another difference if you wanted to explore more public areas. Maybe <laughs> you would want to do Inter Islander. Um, but yeah, uh, also what? But what I, I also liked about Blue Bridge is the fact that it felt a lot less crowded than i think yes. we've taken with the inter islander sure. inter islander does a lot more marketing you know appeals more to the international market just because they have that really good sort of marketing going on but in turn it making it make the boarding much easier rather than being yeah. in between like you know three or four like big huge like mighty or maui camper vans yeah and yeah we were I just, just tiny little car that was yeah. so much easier it yeah. kind of feels like blue bridge is a bit of the underdog of the yeah, very yeah, scene yeah, yeah. so you know you it it was it really was like a good experience to have to have to have gone on both ferries and see like this one is it does feel a little quieter there's more space so as i was saying earlier in the in the video it always feels like you can go to like you know there's lots of different areas that you can relax in and also viewing areas where like look at this couple just uh, in front of us like they had this pretty much this whole deck to themselves um you know so well not whole deck to themselves but you know the whole view view yeah, area no, that's, a, that's a very you know we've so. filmed in the gopro it's a wide angle they yeah. have a lot of space yeah it's yeah very exactly spacious, so yeah. it never feels too crowded as well which was great and it's great if you are stressed with the driving aspect getting onto the ferry i felt like it was very and, smooth and to your point anyway look we've got a table which is right in front of you at the time when the view is the best yeah. without any problem right yeah. so so you know that's good <laughs> All right, so we are arriving in the beautiful Picton Harbour. Our ferry is about to berth in uh, the beautiful harbour and uh, we are going to have to do a bit of a loop a bit mm. of a turn and make our way um, 
you know, inside our uh, kind of uh, uh, off-boarding area and then then get to our car and get out. So as we're making our way uh, toward Picton, uh, there starts being a few announcements saying, hey, if you have a car, start making your way to your car and all these kind of things. And obviously what Laura does is getting a last few uh, mm -hmm. viewing points. Obviously, that's what she does. Obviously. Um, so, yeah. But it is your time to start making your way toward your vehicle. But, you know, make sure you take in the view. The Marlboro Sound is actually taking in the view. Sorry, the Marlboro Sound is absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, Picton is quite stunning. So we were lucky enough to actually arrive at uh, sunset. And, again, it was winter, so the sun is going to set really damn quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, you saw you saw the shot of the boat kind of arriving in Picton first, and you can see, like, the sun is already signif significantly more down. And so, yeah, here's what's going to happen. So the boat right now, the boat's nose right now is basically facing the harbor. And the, what the boat's going to have to do is to basically do a 180, and turn around because it has to park but first that's right i'm using the correct boat terminology aren't i oh yeah um so yeah so the nose is facing right now but it needs to face the butt so here's what's going to happen the boat is going to do a 180 and laura is obviously preparing herself into direct the boat look, look at her she was already pointing in the right direction that's definitely what i was doing i was pointing yeah. the boat in the right direction but quite a lot of people have decided to get out and obviously taking the view and you know film that it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of a really cool kind of place yeah. to be at and see that and you can see that the the boat is park is parking that's right i'm using all the correct boats <laughs> boating terms is parking literally right by the inter island ferry so if you were thinking oh one company has a better location than the other uh, no really they're it side by side they're side by side and they take off from one for a similar place and they will take back in you know and, and they they'd start from the same place as well so it's it's relatively you know relatively close by but yeah so the uh, ferry is slowly doing its turn and so it takes surprisingly uh, a little amount of time you know I, I always think like oh you know those kind of maneuvers going to take hours and everything but you know it takes it like you know less than 10 minutes to like kind of go around turn around it's kind of like fast I don't even know if I, 10 minutes is the... Maybe it's five. I don't know. But it was really fast. I was really surprised how fast it was. Yeah. I don't really have the, the right... The data. The, the numbers. The right data, yeah. <laughs> if somebody from Blue Bridge watches this at any point, can you please comment below and correct all the information we said wrong, including this one. I want to know how long it takes you to do the, the 360. Do the please spin. let us know. Anyway, so you've got to make your way back down to your car. You do. So uh, they will open the doors once you are free to go down to your car, which kind of happens once they've sort of parked up. Uh, parked up? Again, we don't know our sailing terms, but once the boat has parked up, you can make your merry way back to your vehicle, which, I mean, you should have some idea where it was parked. Do keep that in mind. Um, when you are leaving your car, make sure you know where you parked it so you can easily find it. <laughs> like Laura, she's, she, she pointed out. She got, yeah, it, she got it. She got I it. I could certainly find it a lot easier than I could have could find the cabin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, just squeezing our way through the vehicles. And then, you know, once you get to your vehicle, uh, they ask you to not switch on your engines yes. and stuff straight away. So uh, you just know, switch on your engine when the car in front of you is already moving. You, yeah, you, you it doesn't take that long to get started. Yeah, like, you, don't, you don't need to sort of, you know, start guzzling that gas for no reason. I have to um, say the person behind us was a bit of a grumpy person and that started kind of like making their way, uh, yeah. you know, trying to, you know, trying to move like behind us. It just doesn't change anything. You know, everything has to be empty. Obviously, I did cut right here. It takes a, it takes a bit of a while, right? So yeah. I did cut the video. Um, because I felt like you guys watching us kind of waiting for it yeah. uh, is useless. But so just look at the stuff. I know, just to us. reassure Sherry, even when you leave the ferry, you don't need to reverse. You just, they, you know, they fill it out in a way so that you can basically do a turn yeah. and you've got space to just drive forward. It's just like even disembarking the ferry is made easy. Um, like arguably easier than getting on the ferry. So yeah, l less stress. All right, so what we're going to be doing right here is making our way outside the ferry and then we're going to be uh, in Picton. So now a couple of things that you're going to see in Picton is that you're going to see a lot of roadworks. This obviously may have changed by the time. Woo, it looks like I'm going fast, but I'm, not re I'm really not going that fast. But yeah, so as we're getting off the ferries, there are signs everywhere. There's kind of really no way to get lost. And again, you're going to see a lot of construction work and everything. That obviously may, may change by the time you're getting there. But yeah, make sure that you follow slowly. Well, usually just the car in front of you. But it's very, even if you're the first car, uh, which usually you're not the first car because there's usually going to be a truck. 
but uh, yeah, even if you do a first car, you're not going to get lost. Um, guaranteed. It's a Robin guaranteed. But yeah, so you're now in Picton. You're now in the South End of New Zealand. Good job, everybody. You made it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Adil says, brilliant, very informative video. I would like to see more of these videos. Nice to hear that, my friend. Make sure to share it. So, you know, if it's popular, we'll do some more for sure. And Sherry says, I'm worrying about trying to reverse my camper van in general. My reversing skill are not the greatest. Well, we'll the send you a link on, uh, we'll send you a link uh, from NZ Pocket Guide. We have an article of how to drive your camper van the easy way. So we've got some tips on that. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us for this live session. We see you in a Patreon show in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.